How would you like to learn how to present some Montessori activities to your child without any investment at all? I'm here today to show you how to do a cultural presentation, a presentation of material from the cultural studies area. And you don't have to buy anything because you probably have the stuff right at home in your kitchen. So let's get started and I'm going to show you something fun. Now what I love about Montessori culture is that you can be so creative with it, you can be so inventive and you don't actually have to invest a lot of money. And the same material that you have can be used in different ways with your children and it allows them to develop a sense of curiosity and understanding of the world around us. They develop an appreciation and a value of nature and our relationship and the importance of things to us and us to them. That there's this interdependency between human beings and all living things. Now today I've chosen to tell you a little bit about material that we find in botany. Culture, uh, the area of culture is divided into zoology, botany, geography, history and science. So today I've chosen something to show you that will cover the area of botany and all you need are some fruits from your kitchen. Now I'm using model fruits because this is of course a classroom so we keep it on the shelf but you can just open up your fridge or see what you have in your kitchen and pick up maybe three to five different uh, fruit that you know that's there or if you don't have a variety of fruit you can choose to work with a set of vegetables that's entirely up to you all right so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways three different ways in which we teach the children about model fruits now the first activity that we do is basically a discussion in our classrooms we do this with a group of children it could be a large group or it could be a small group of children in this case I'm going to use one child one-on-one -on -one. you can do that as well hi Aryan Today I want to explore some fruit with you. We're going to be learning about fruit. Do you like fruit? What's your favorite fruit? Apple. Apple, okay. Let's see what I have in my basket that we're going to learn about today. So, tell me if you know what this is. Pear. And what color is the skin of the pear? Yellow. And do you know what color the flesh is? White. Okay, now, uh, does this fruit have seeds? Yes. Does it have one seed or many seeds? Many seeds. Now tell me, have you eaten a pear before? Yes. Is the flesh uh, soft or is it crunchy? Crunchy. And can we eat the skin? No. Can we eat the seeds? No. Okay. Would you like to keep it at the top of the mat? Okay. Look, there's your favorite fruit. What is this? Do you know? Apple. Right. What color is the skin? Red. And do you know what color the flesh is? White. Okay, does it have seeds? Yes. One or many? Many. Can we eat the seeds? No. Can we eat the skin? No. Is the flesh crunchy or soft? Crunchy. Okay, let's keep it at the top. Have you seen this fruit before, Aryan? Yes. What is it? Banana. And can you tell me what color the skin is? Yellow. And what color is the flesh? Yellow. Okay, and does it have seeds? No. Actually, it has very tiny seeds inside. You know when you bite it and you see those little dots? Those are the seeds of the uh -huh. banana. And uh, can we eat the seeds? Yes. Yes, we can. And how about the skin? Can we eat it? No. No. Now this fruit, the flesh, is it crunchy or soft? Soft. Right. Can you keep it at the top? So let's go over the fruits that we've learned about today. Let me see if you remember, okay? Pear, apple, banana, orange, mango, kiwi. Right. Now, we're going to put these back on the shelf. Anytime you want to take them, you want to look at them, you can take them from the shelf, okay? Would you like me to, uh, would you like to help me put them away? Okay. It's as simple as that. But the important thing to remember is that there's a lot of interaction. It's not me telling the child, this is an apple, it's red, the flesh is crunchy. I'm chatting with the child. I want to gauge what they know. Children know so much and they want to talk, they want to share. So we want to give them the opportunity to do so. 
So I chat with the child and I find out and if there are any holes, any gaps, that's where I put my knowledge in and fill in those gaps for the child, the gaps in the knowledge and answer their questions. It should be casual and comfortable and interactive where the child feels, you know, easy to ask you questions. Now the next step that we would do is to use a three period lesson to teach the child the vocabulary because, you know, yes, they talked about it. Uh, there could be the names of fruit that they don't know and I want to make sure that they learn these names. So on another day, I would choose three fruits and I would do a three period lesson. Now, some of you may not know how to present a three, three period lesson. I am going to put the link right up here and I will also link it in our description box below because we have a brilliant video teaching you exactly how to present a three period lesson with absolutely anything. So you can watch that video and it will show you how to teach your children the different names of the fruit. Of course, these are easy ones, but you might be teaching them new ones like dragon fruit, or, you know, guava, things that they may not know. This is new vocabulary. You want to ensure that they are learning those words. Okay. At a later stage, when my child is, let's say, above four years and they have completed a certain amount of language activities in our classroom, we wait till they have completed the blue series. Okay, now uh, we have a uh, whole set of videos on language and I'm going to link them uh, over here as well. So you can watch those videos and it'll give you an idea of what kind of language markers the child would have uh, reached before you can do the last presentation. And what we do in the last presentation, again, we chat about the fruit, we ask the child, do you remember what this is? Uh, can you tell me about it now? We are hoping there are no holes in the knowledge and the child is able to tell you confidently everything about that they know about these items. And after that's done, we have these word tags, which we ask them to read and match. Now, these words are not necessarily uh, phonetic words that the child can break down very easily, but that's why I said they should have at least covered the blue series in language because then they will be able to sound out the beginning letters, the beginning sounds, and then make an intelligent guess and be able to read and match it to the correct fruit. So we have made this uh, a very rich activity. There's a lot that the child is learning here. What we do in our classrooms is we extend it, we make fruit salad, we do fruit and uh, printing with the children, we make juices, we do peeling of uh, you know the fruits in in uh, the practical life area. Uh, sometimes you know we take them to an orchard and we do fruit picking. There's a lot, a lot that you can do. You could do planting activities. So this can go on and on. We find storybooks that are related to this, just like the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And we, uh, you know, teach them about the fruit through that. We can explore this and, uh, you know, stretch it into a healthy or a junk food um, theme with the children and let them talk about the benefits of eating fruit and the nutritional value. So it's really up to you and the level of your child's interest, how far and how long you can carry on learning about these items. Now this is fruit, you can do the same thing with animals, you can do it with vegetables. Of course it's not possible to have all the real or model uh, fruits, what you can do later after giving your child a lot of concrete experience is go into pictures but uh, we we have our pictures are at least a4 size because we want them to be able to see the details in it the pictures should show, uh, should show the skin as well as the flesh of the fruit for the child to get a clear depiction of it again this is material that's easy to make you don't have to go out and buy anything you can print them you can uh, show them pictures of google images or of wikipedia and talk about it that way so there is really a lot that you can do without having to spend too much money without having to work on making materials because i know everybody's pressed for time uh, and you'll entertain your child and teach them something as well I hope that you have enjoyed learning about how to present fruits, learning about this botany activity from Montessori Cultural Studies. I will be back soon with 
more activities for you with more for all of us to learn and grow in the field of Montessori. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Montessori Dictionary. Please make sure that you hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we post a video. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and I look forward to seeing you again in the next two weeks. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.